this just in. More and more bloodshed, more and more deaths, but an important player picks a side this week. On the 27th, the Battle of Pinos Altos, Arizona, where 300 Apache warriors will face off against 15 Confederate militia armed in addition with one cannon. The Apache begin their attack on Pinos Altos and a nearby mining camp, leaving both to be completely undefended. And they are technically correct, but the Confederate militia is not that far away, and within minutes are in the town. They are greeted and meet up with some armed civilians who believe that they stand a chance if they can keep the Apache at bay with the long-range gunfire. Long-range, of course, is better equipped for the militia than it is for the Apache. But the Apache know this, and after a bit of long-range gunfire, they charge, specifically at noon. And to hand fighting, is the Apache specialty. The freshness can usually rout an inexperienced and demoralized enemy. And it seems like it's about to work when the cannon is brought up, aimed, and fired. The Apache retreat under cannon fire. The Apache lost 10 men dead and 20 wounded. The Confederates lost 5 men dead and 7 wounded. Major General John C. Fremont of the Union, on the 29th, completes his objective. He has successfully marched all the way from St. Louis to Sedalia. By reaching Sedalia, he threatens Major General Sterling Price's supply line. And if he really wanted to, he could take his men and cut off Major John will storing price from any hope of reinforcement and resupply. This is a threat too serious for Price to ignore, so he takes his men and begins the long march towards Arkansas. To quote Price himself, their commanders, referring to the Union, do not wish to run any risk, their policy being to make attacks only where they feel confident, through superiority of numbers. Of victory. On the 30th of September, there are calls for Governor McGuffin of Kentucky to resign. These calls are actually worse than I would you want to believe because they come from his own state legislature, which is another sign of confidence in the Union. On October 2nd, Senator John C. Breckinridge runs from Kentucky into Confederate controlled territory. Now, if you remember, John C. Breckinridge is also our previous vice president under James Buchanan, though he is currently a senator of Kentucky. Maybe that's being too gracious to him, because he's really barely a senator. There have been many calls for him to resign. He has previously run away from Union-controlled Kentucky into Confederate-controlled areas of Kentucky. Now he's left the state entirely. And if his intentions aren't clear enough, which they certainly are, he is running away along with fellow Confederate sympathizers. Yes, Breckinridge is running away from the country he once served into its enemy. The next day, a battle in West Virginia. The Union are led by Brigadier General Joseph Reynolds. He leads the 24th, 25th, and 32nd Ohio, along with 7th, 9th, 13th, 14th, 15th, and 17th Indiana. He also has some artillery at his disposal. If we were to total up the number of men, it would be around 5,000. The Confederates are led by Brigadier General Jackson. I mean, that can't be right. He should be farther east. Am I reading this wrong? Brigadier General Henry R. Jackson. No other famous Jackson. He leads the 1st and 12th Georgia Infantry, 23rd, 25th, 31st, and 44th. 
Virginia Infantry and 3rd Arkansas. The combined, they number around 1,500 men. But nearby is the 52nd Virginia. It is midnight when Reynolds begins his movement towards Greenbrier, which is, as I said, in western Virginia, around this area. It is daylight as it just breaks over when the Union finally arrives. Though their movements have not alerted the Confederate camp. The Confederates don't realize what is happening until they hear and some feel gunfire. They quickly rush to their guns, but find their arms to be faulty, and thus have to begin a fighting retreat. Though it's not just those in camp that hear the gunfire, as the 52nd Virginia Infantry, and we're around 300 men, hear the bullets in battle and move in, trying to help shore up the Confederate line. They're actually successful in doing so. And thus, a real battle is had. Wine pouring fire into other line, chaos, and death. It is Reynolds that breaks off the fight. Reynolds lost 8 men dead, 35 wounded. Confederates lost 6 men dead, 33 wounded, and 13 men missing. Wait a minute, you can't be serious, right? I gotta tell them. Okay, this just in. Breaking news. Dan Sickles is on the move. Yes, Joseph Hooker has been tasked with defending Maryland from an imminent Confederate invasion, and he moves himself to the Potomac. And, I meant, more breaking news. There's no enemy to face, so this is still a waste of Sickles' skills. But, Despite knowing this to be a waste of his skills, Sickles humbly follows orders. To summarize this week, the Confederates face off against both the Union and the Apache. A former VP runs to the Confederacy, and Sickles is still kept on a leash. And then there's Missouri. Up till now, Missouri has been thrown back and forth from one side to another, but Price has retreated. He looks like he's going all the way to Arkansas. That makes Missouri Fremont's domain, with some small Confederate holdouts. Fremont did it with positioning. But positioning and forced withdrawals aren't going to win this war. What will? Oh, we'll just have to wait and see. Hello. It's literally the entire Civil War week by week team here. This time in a spiffy costume. Now, if you liked the video, please click like. If you want to see more, you should be seeing around now a recommended video for those of you with well commitment. For those of you with slightly higher commitment, there should also be a playlist of the entire war up till now, plus this week's episode. And if you want to see more, or the entire Civil War depresses you, and you're very worried, so you don't want any information about the possible Confederate invasion, which is coming right towards you, Maine, then don't subscribe. But for those of you who are willing to defend Maine, which is an imminent danger, please subscribe. For those of you who disliked the video, you're probably a traitor. Lincoln!